Hey everybody, I'm here with my dad and we're going to go meet somebody for lunch. So we're driving about five miles, 16 minutes to go to lunch and we've got the brand new FSD 12.4.1 here, hands-free self-driving. So let's see how it does. All right, FSD's on. Nice start to the drive here. Very smooth, very confident, very natural. So as we were coming here, I don't know if you noticed, there was some construction going on. The workers were uh, marking the lane markings and the lane crossings, uh, street crossings. There were some cones. So I'm uh, looking forward to how FSD 12.4 is gonna handle that. Yeah. If these are the real world challenges, right? Now we're at that point that these real world challenges, edge cases, is what it boils down to. Right. For them to completely have an autonomous, you know, vehicle that doesn't have the steering wheel, the brakes, the accelerator. Yeah, the basic stuff seems to be handled pretty well now. Yeah, better than better than humans for sure. Okay. All right, so we got to make a left turn here. It's a little bit challenging, especially on the right side, to make sure that we've got cl uh, clarity to go. Yeah. And but there's no stop sign for the mm -hmm. other guys, so this is right. also unique. So a couple of road bumps coming up. Let's see how it slows down on that. It's right now it's at, at 26. 26. Okay, down And it's to, taking it down wow. at 8. Very nice. Nice. Very nice. And it, it decelerated very smoothly. Yeah. You couldn't so, even feel anything. Another one, 23, 22, 21. Nice. Eight. Again, down to okay. eight. Okay. So here's the construction workers. They have removed the cones. But, but they the, are still standing but there. still there. The, the truck's, trucks in the road. There, yeah. Let's see. And yeah, this ah. is going to be a little challenging. They're standing right in the middle of the lane here. Yeah. Let's see how he... Well, how the car decides to uh it's waiting for the guy yeah. to move yeah yeah at some point in time it should lose patience and say you know what actually i'm going to drive around this guy yeah uh, i would you know i would probably be going around at okay this point. let's see the guy's moving now okay and the car decided to okay the guy has moved. okay wow it did still go around him but i don't know why yeah. it wanted to make sure that it knew which direction the guy was going to move Maybe it sensed that he, that wasn't his final position, that he was going somewhere. Yeah. So I wanted to know maybe if he was going to cross or get in the car or what. So if there was a car behind me, that would have gotten a little mm -hmm. impatient. Maybe I would have. But then also, if there was a car behind us, maybe it would have taken a different action. That's a good point. That's a good point. Because I have kind of noticed it sometimes get out of the way when there's a car behind it. Really? Uh-huh. That's smart. Like change lanes if someone's trying to go yeah. faster than you, that kind of thing. I really want to see it reverse. Yeah, I was disappointed they haven't activated that yet. I imagine when they do actually smart summon and vanish, they'll also activate reverse while you're driving. So technically the camera's on the front allow it to drive freely obviously you know very confidently but the camera on the back doesn't have the same capabilities otherwise it would have been just like oh you know you're driving now that's the front you know but mm -hmm. i guess the position of the camera and everything else makes it such that you know reverse driving may not be same as the front you know, forward driving i mean this car has three forward facing cameras and only one rear camera Oh, three of Yeah, and the rear camera can get dirty much easier. So they could put three rear-facing cameras too, but I, I don't, you know, they've chosen to just kind of have the forward-facing have more. I mean, obviously a car like this does have a front. Maybe with their future robo-taxi vehicle or something, they'll have Correct. A, a vehicle with no front where it can go either way. But, exactly. But you've noticed they actually... Um, Look at this... Little yeah, a little, little there, confusion there about the road there. markings. Possibly because there was a car coming in there. Uh -huh. It might not have wanted to get too close to it. But um, 
Yeah. Um, so the metro trains, you know, the ones that drive by themselves at the airports uh, without any driver, they don't really have a front or a back, right? Right. They, so I, are you saying you expect something similar when Tesla rolls out cars that don't have any steering wheels or brakes or accelerators that both the front and back might look same? It could be that way. Other people have taken that design choice, Cruise Origin, Zooks, they all have designs for a driverless vehicle where there is no front or no back. So instead of having to do a three point turn to turn around, you just simply start moving the other direction, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So are the three cameras at the front to do the triangulation for depth measurement more accurately? Not exactly. I mean, they can do monocular depth estimation with just one camera off the sides and the back. So the multiple cameras do help give it more information for distance triangulation, but I think it's kind of like a narrow view, a forward view, and a wide view. So oh, okay. they're actually kind of different lenses to get different sort of viewing angles. One's more focused on just what's right in front of you. One is more focused on a wider shot, that Got type you. of thing. And the one's a normal one. Yeah. Well, actually, with the newest cars, they actually now only have two forward-facing cameras. Oh, okay. They've eliminated one of them. I wonder which one. Yeah, I, I guess the newer cameras are better. They didn't need three. So they uh, actually took one of the forward-facing cameras and started putting it in the bumper for the Cybertruck. Oh, interesting. Are they putting the ultrasonic back in cars or is that permanently taken out now? Yeah, that's not coming back. I don't think so. My car has it. Your so car still has it, but... This might be the last model that they had. It's a 2023 yeah. model. And yeah. they changed it in 2023. Even my Model S didn't have ultrasonic sensors on and it. And you got like seven months after me. Yeah. So, yeah, they... You know, this one has the new 3D Park Assist now. It's pretty good. It's not quite as reliable as ultrasonics yet, but it actually gives you more 3D uh, spatial information. Yeah. All right, very nice lane change here. This Trying is, to get into the left turn yeah, lane. This left turn is usually tricky because a lot of traffic. Oh, that was really smart. Did you see how it got into it super early? Yes. Even kind of yeah. breaking the law a little bit. Yeah. But that's what people do because that's a human this, behavior. this left turn lane gets backed up quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah, that is smart. And yeah. now it picks the lanes. If there are two left lanes, left turning lane, it picks the lane that has less cars. Yeah. So that's something that... I noticed in 12.4, that was not in 12.3.6. Yeah, that's important. Yeah. But overall, really smooth, comfortable drive so, so far. far yeah. It's pretty amazing and completely hands-free. You can see the new little green dot in the dashboard yeah. to indicate that it's hands-free. So, um, so can you kind of try to predict the roadmap from 12.4 to where we don't have to keep an eye on the road, we don't have to do anything, we could have seats facing each other. Um, what are we looking at? What are the steps they need to achieve to reach that stage? Well, obviously the first step is the software. Uh -huh. So it needs to be able to do every drive with zero interventions. And I think they're making pretty rapid progress in miles per intervention in a generalized way. So just looking at any road. But this actually, from a software perspective, is much further along to generalized autonomy in terms of actually a card you can sell not okay this is in a certain area but here you can actually buy this car and use it it's 
really looking pretty good. I don't think anyone expected things to be improving this quickly. I think people are really going to like 12.4 in the hands free driving too. But the software is kind of looking uh, like it's on track. They're doing the right things there. Then the next step is going to be the purpose built robo taxi vehicle, which they're having an event for on August 8th. So about a week before your birthday. And um, then they're going to sort of show off that design. I don't think it's necessarily going to have seats facing each other. I think they're maybe going to do like a two seat uh, thing facing forward, but it definitely does open up new possibilities for interior design. It's going to be like an interior design playground for the auto industry. Everything they've taken for granted for the last hundred years that you have to have these seats facing forward and there needs to be controls for the driver and that there is a driver. All those assumptions are going out the window now. So there's definitely a lot of opportunity to revisit the design of cars and take things in just an entirely new direction. So Waymo has cars where, you know, taxis where there's no driver, right? And then hey, look, at, look at this, how it's keeping a gap. Yeah. I because like there's that. another street here. That's so smart. In the past, it would just block it. Yeah, and, and I would think that it, wherever it was written, stay clear, that it was reading signs, but it's not reading signs because there was no yeah. stay clear written here. It yeah. just uses, you know, common, some sense. Kind of common sense saying, okay, right. you know, I better keep this intersection clear. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's a huge, huge uh, improvement where the comfort level for the person using FSD goes up exponentially when right. I see that. It's like, okay, now I'm not embarrassing myself. I haven't blocked an intersection. Yeah. So going back to Waymo, so how is it possible that Waymo is giving people rides in LA and San Francisco and Phoenix with a software that's not even half as good as Tesla? And yet Tesla hasn't started that kind of service even in, in those limited cities. Well, I mean, Waymo can't do this drive, for example. Correct. And they're pretty good, you know. I use it all the time now instead of Uber when I can, but the big breakthrough for Waymo was mapping. If you look at the Google self-driving car project, which started in 2009, mm -hmm. you know, AlexNet, which, was, which really kicked off the modern deep learning revolution when they beat ImageNet by using deep learning on NVIDIA GPUs, and they realized, you know, you can scale up deep learning by using GPUs. That was the big breakthrough. That didn't happen until three years after the Google self-driving car project started. So the Google self-driving car project was really about mapping. It was when they started doing Google Maps and they started doing Street View. Mm -hmm. And they said, okay, what if we just mapped out the whole city with LiDAR? Could we then self-drive? So for... Tesla, the challenging thing is looking at the scene and figuring out what's going on, right? So it needs to look at this scene. It needs to understand, okay, I'm at an intersection. There's a stop sign. There's a car. There's a bike. There's a crosswalk. All of that has to come in on the fly, right? None of that information is in a database. Whereas for Waymo, they have all the answers. They know exactly where the curb is. They know exactly what lane everything is they choose an optimal route you know so okay but, this but the but the humans and the other cars are still dynamic variables for them also yeah of course but there's a lot less that you have to figure out yourself you have a lot more of the answers for sure in the map and then you know you saw for example like they had a situation where they um had an issue in the map and then the waymo you know hit a pole even though it's got this LiDAR and all these other sensors on it, when the map is incorrect, that can really sort of make the system kind of brittle. Correct. So we're getting to Redondo Pier. That's where we're going to do lunch. And it's a little tricky. And let's see which route it takes. There's a parking actually at the upper elevation, elevated level. I hope it takes that one, but there's also another parking. Oh, it did take that one. Okay. There's a curb here, small curb. Okay. okay, it's trying to figure out how to navigate through here. Let's see. Parking rate, $2 per hour. Come on, you gotta move. 
So it's not sure. I, I mean, I think it does actually have room. Oh, oh I was it, about to hit the uh, accelerator, but it, it actually... Oh. Okay, well, it looks like we got a car behind us, so I'm gonna tap the yeah. accelerator. Oh, that's interesting. It's, I, I think it the, thinks, it thought it didn't have room, but it actually did. did yeah. Or it thought maybe we had to take a ticket. Yeah, maybe. Because that did look like one of those entrances. I think I think it probably just thought it didn't. Okay, have there's a roundabout here. Let's see which direction it. Oh goes. yeah, and this is like an unmapped roundabout, so it yeah. doesn't know about it. It's just purely reasoning wow. based on vision. Wow, that's amazing! How it navigates around that unmapped roundabout. Another one right here, and a little bit of and these curves and everything. Okay, we're getting to the parking structure. Okay, very nice. This is all, this this road does not really exist on any mm. Google map. These, well, I mean it does. It, these streets don't here. have names per se. They don't have names, but okay, let's see it is it on the map. Okay, let's see if it finds a parking spot. Now that would be the best spot if it finds a parking spot. It says, okay, I'm gonna go park. So like it's stopping for this person yeah. crossing the street. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it'll find a parking spot itself. But it look at where it's planning to drop us. It's planning. Oh, did it, did you just end I, it? I turned it off, and I'm gonna tell it to park now. Where? Right there. Oh, you picked a spot already. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. What's the number? One eight five. One eight seven nine. Or is it nine seven eight one? <laughs> oh, beautiful. Very well done, sir. Thank you very much. So there you go. Parking spot to parking spot. Zero interventions. Totally. Hands free. All right. Yeah. Take care, everyone. We'll Thanks. do one more drive back.